So boxing scene are now reporting that Carl Frampton looks set to take on Josh Warrington in December of this year, late December by the looks of things, in Manchester, in the Manchester Arena on BT Sports pay-per-view. From what I can see, they don't want Carl Frampton to be too close to Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury, so that looks more likely that Wilder Fury will take place in this or not December, November. And Frampton and Warrington will take place in December. That's what some various sources are reporting. The source I seen was from Boxing Scene. I'm going to leave a link to that actual article in the description below. So if anyone wants to go and check that out, it's all there. It pretty much says everything that needs to be said with regards to the fight. Now I'm going to touch on this fight briefly. Okay, Josh Warrington, Carl Frampton. Two big names within their respective fans. Carl Frampton would be more universally known than Josh Warrington. I would say if you look at Frank Warren and his stable of fighters, you would have to say the two biggest fighters that he has are Tyson Fury and Carl Frampton. Tyson Fury is huge because he's the man who beat the man in Vladimir Klitschko. A lot of people know him. A lot of people don't like him, but he's well known. Carl Frampton is well known as well. He's known around the UK. He's known around Ireland, obviously, for him being from the north, he sold, I think he, did he sell out the MGM? I know he definitely did good numbers in Brooklyn when he fought Santa Cruz over there. Um, not sure if he sold out the MGM when he had the rematch, but Carl Frampton is headlined in Vegas, is headlined in New York. Carl Frampton's a big name, all right? He's not quite the cash cow of an Anthony Joshua or Canelo Alvarez, but he's a big name. So, Frank Warren is one of his highest kind of profile fighters is facing Josh Warrington, a guy he signed there, I think it was December 2016 was when he originally signed Josh Warrington. I know Warrington was with Eddie Hearn for a long time, actually. And Frank Warren got Josh Warrington to a world title. He got him his fight in Elland Road. And Josh Warrington was a fighter who I watched a lot because he was on Sky a lot. And he, he never really struck me as anything too special. You know, he never, he seemed decent, he seemed better than British level, European, yeah, he seemed European, kind of European was the level I thought Josh Warren was at, not because he wasn't talented, he was a good boxer, but he just lacked, I think that he, he just lacked something, and I'm not, he, he lacked punching power, but there was just something about Josh Warren that just, you didn't think he could step it up anymore, you thought that, especially when he fought Kiko Martinez, and he struggled a bit in that fight, you thought, okay, this is the limit, you know, fringe world level, this is where Josh Warrington is at. And I've never really been too keen on Lee Selby. I've always felt him as kind of a champion who got more credit than he deserved. You know, and what was that guy's name? Gragovich or something it was. He was over the hill and Oscar Valdez showed what he can do when he fought him. He took him out in, what was it, two, two or three rounds? Maybe it was four. But I know Valdez took him out and Lee Selby... You know, he schooled him. He beat him up, but I think that Valdez did a better job. And Lee Selby went on a run of basically fighting nobody. So while he had the belt, he fought them. Um, who's the guy? Fernando Montel, I think his name was. A flyweight who had no business being a featherweight in his first defense. He fought Eric Hunter. It was a decent win. And then he went to year of the ring and had a non-title fight before fighting Jonathan Victor Barros, who was tiny. And then had another non-title fight before finally losing to Josh Warrington. So he had a three-year title run where he fought absolutely nobody's. And Josh Warrington, when he won the title off Lee Selby back there in May, I really did think he would get a boxing lesson off Selby. Not because Selby's anything special, but I thought he was better than Warrington. But I was wrong. Warrington absolutely annihilated Lee Selby. I remember watching that fight thinking... This is a shutout, and I think I scored that fight when I was watching it. Like I think I had uh, 11 rounds to one, I think, in Warren Taylor. I think I only gave Selby the third. That's why I was so shocked it was a split decision. Selby, or Martin, pretty much beat the crap out of Selby. So, if it wasn't that Warren really can't punch, he'd be a, he'd be a formidable fighter, because he's a lot better than I gave him credit for. That being said, I can't see him beating Carl Frampton. I think Carl Frampton is leagues above Lee Selby. He hits harder. He's just a better boxer. I think, like, I know people say Lee Selby's a good fighter. I think Carl Frampton's better in every aspect. I even think Carl Frampton, although he's shorter, doesn't have as long a reach. I think he's a better outside boxer. I think he's got one of the best jabs in the featherweight division. Despite the fact he's such a short fighter with such a short reach, he's a terrific jab. 
If you've ever seen Carl Frampton throw that jab, it's very, very good, very hard, very snappy punch. Throws it very well. It's a very good jab. But Carl Frampton, he can he can apply pressure. Carl Frampton's a very, very good fighter. Very good fighter. And I think that there are leagues in boxing, and I think Carl Frampton, even now, is still a league above Josh Warrington. And Carl Frampton, I, ju- I just... What is Josh Warrington going to keep Carl Frampton off of him with? Because Carl Frampton, although he's not a devastating puncher or featherweight, he can still hit hard. You know, I think Leo Santa Cruz will tell you Carl Frampton hits hard. So what is Josh Warrington going to keep Carl Frampton off of him with? Because Carl Frampton will be looking at jab, he'll be looking at come down the middle with the right hand, and he throw, throws good body shots, he threw some very good body shots there in against Luke Jackson there a couple of weeks ago, up in Windsor Park. So, from what I'm thinking, I'm thinking Carl Frampton has this fight. The only thing that worries me about Carl Frampton is his weight, because he has seemingly been struggling to do featherweight. Because he missed featherweight for that fight against the guy whose name escapes me, he slipped in the shower and called the fight off. He had a fight then against that, what was his name, Gonzalez or Garcia? I think it was Garcia. And that was a 10-rounder. They were allowed to come in heavy for that. He did make featherweight against the Nair. He had to strip off naked against Jackson to make featherweight. And the reason that worries me is because if you're dealing with the IBF, they have a 10-pound rehydration clause. Now, I know the IBF don't have that in place for unifications, but I'm not sure if they'll consider the WBO interim title a unification fight. They might. And considering the money that this fight's probably going to draw, I suspect the IBF probably will consider this a unification, in which case, that's fine. Carl Frampton doesn't have that to worry about. But if they don't, I'd be worrying a bit about that £10 rehydration clause, just because he's looked... He's looked very drained as of late, and especially when he was back down at super bantamweight, um, especially in the Scott Quick fight, you could tell that really was hindering Carl Frampton making the weight and the 10 pound rehydration clause because back then, it didn't matter if it was a unification, you still had to do the 10 pound check weight. So it, 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 that just kind of worries me, you know, with the workload, you know, if Warren decides to you know, go down to the body because if he's struggling to make the weight, the body shots will tell. So, you know, I think that Carl Frampton, he should win this fight. I expect him to win this fight, probably on points. That wouldn't rule him out stopping Josh Warrington. But I suspect Carl Frampton win this fight on points. And I really don't think Carl Frampton has that many fights in him. I think they were saying up in Belfast on the radar that this was Carl Frampton's last fight in Belfast. And I think a few people were reporting that, you know, he wants to maybe win the world title off Josh Warrington. I know the plan actually was, and this is actually quite funny, that... I think the plan they were saying was for Lee Selby to beat Josh Warrington and then have the world title fight in August, but that didn't happen. Josh Warrington threw a spanner in the works there. So he's going to be fighting him in December, and yeah, I expect Carl Frampton to win, and I think realistically what Carl Frampton wants is he wants that trilogy with Leo Santa Cruz just to finish off and take the career off. So those are my thoughts and opinions on this fight. Like I said, I got Carl Frampton to win this fight. I'm going to leave the link to the article. I read this off down in the description below. Hope you like the videos. I am trying to get these out as much as I can. And I'm hoping to get a couple more out this week. Thank you. Good night.